So, ulcerative colitis. That's a fun one, huh? Every meal you eat feels like a cactus, slowly moving through your innocent colon. It's fun times. It's fun times. I suffered for a good portion of my life with that illness. My entire 20s, throw them out. Throw them out. I was at home wondering what the hell I could eat and bleeding. That, that's what my 20s was. So I finally healed it. And I just got news that George St. Pierre, one of my favorite fighters, he... So GSP has colitis. And from the articles I'm reading, it looks like he's going the medical route. He thinks... He found the cure, and doctors are giving him pills now, and now you can go back to eating whatever you want. That's not how this illness works, buddy. I'm sorry. I wish it did. I wish I could go eat deep-fried pizza wrapped in cheese and bacon, but I can't. We can't do that. So I'll show you how I overcame this naturally with diet and some herbal treatments and juicing and stuff, and you can get rid of this 100%. I'm eating spicy shit now would have set my body aflame in the past, but I'm cured. I'm cured now. I'll show you how I did it, and you can do it too. I'm a vampire, running around the street in a werewolf's costume. I'm unstoppable, but lost. So to make a real long story short, when I was in high school, about 18, I started to get the stomach pains, and I just let it get worse and worse. I was just like, yeah, that's normal. Whatever. My diet's basically pizza and McDonald's. I deserve this. I deserve this. <laughs> so, it started getting worse until a point where I was about 21. I was noticing so much blood in the toilet. I was just like, okay, I should probably do something about this. I'm going to die on the toilet. That's going to be embarrassing as shit. They're going to find my body hunched over on a toilet. Bloody. That's not how I'm going out. I want to be carried away by a moth into a fantasy land and eaten by his babies. That's how I plan to go out. So I went to my doctor. He sent me to a gastroenterologist and they stuck a camera up my butt and I saw that movie. I was like, oh, look at that. And I was, I was looking at the pictures and I was like, oh my God, like what's all the red stuff? There was all these red sores everywhere and white mucus. I'm sorry if you're eating right now so sorry but it looked like a disaster and the doctors were talking to each other and they're like pan colitis ulcerative colitis the entire colon so for those who don't know what ulcerative colitis is picture most people know what an ulcer is imagine that throughout your entire colon everything you eat feels like glass it's a nightmare it's an absolute nightmare so the first question I had for the doctors was what can I eat what should I eat to heal this thing and like, oh, it doesn't matter what you eat. Diet has nothing to do with it. There's no cure. And you'll be on medication for the rest of your life. And eventually, the pain will become so severe, we'll cut your colon out for you. And that's all we know. That's all we know so far. So have fun with that. Have fun with that. You're effed. You're effed for life. So me being stubborn, I didn't believe that. I was like, what the hell are they talking about? You're trying to tell me diet has nothing to do with this? Like, certain things I eat really hurt me. Other things don't. So this began my journey of just researching. What can I eat? And I stumbled through so many different diets. I tell you, I spent years researching this. And it wasn't until I was 26 years old, I finally found a fruit-based raw vegan diet from a man named David Klein. The, ba the man saved my life. I messed up the word man. I called him a ban. We're moving along. This man healed himself of ulcerative colitis when he was also 26 on a fruit-based diet and there was too many synchronicities. I was like, that's me. I want that to be me. I want to heal. So basically it was a fruit-based vegan diet. And my initial thought was, you got to be kidding me. Like how long am I going to have to do this before I can go back to deep frying pork? I want pork in my mouth. But I was like, I'll try it. I'll try anything. I don't care. This The pain's getting too much. So I went on this thing, and I tell you, miracles started happening in my body. I started reading the book, and it was like, he's telling me I'm toxic. I'm a toxic, filthy piece of shit, and I've been gunked up. I'm eating too much fast food. I'm breathing in chemicals from the air. It's like everything I've been doing my whole life has been wrong, 
and you can cleanse thyself on the fruits. So I was like, all right. So I read that my medication that I was taking was toxic for my liver. It's damaging me further. So I tried to taper off. I slowly reduced it until one day I was like, I'm getting off it. It was very scary. That was the scariest thing for me because even though the medication wasn't helping, I was scared to come off it. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I just, I did it one day. I was down to like two pills a day from 12 and I was like, I'm not taking these anymore. And that night I got a fever. I got cold. I was just laying in bed watching TV and all of a sudden I got freezing. Like within 10 seconds, I went from normal to freezing and I got under my blankets and I started shivering, sweating, had a fever. But the next morning I felt great. It was over with. It's like my body had a reaction to stopping the meds and it just wanted to purify it and get it out of the system. So for the next two weeks, I ate nothing but cantaloupes and bananas. And was it the best two weeks of my life? Partly, not taste bud wise, but the cantaloupes are really good. I just kind of hate bananas, but I started having formed bowel movements with no blood. And I was like, oh my God, I'm on the miracle diet. I found the way. Praise be to flat earth Jesus, I'm cured. Now that mindset was my first mistake because I would only do it for like two weeks and then, okay, what can I eat now? I'd like a burger. So I'd have that burger and I'd start getting pains again. And I went through this for like four years. I started in 2008 and it wasn't until 2012 where I had the worst flare up of my life because I ate a huge block of sheep cheese, raw sheep cheese. I thought if it was raw, it was fine. It wasn't, it wasn't. I never felt worse in my life than I did in 2012. When I had that flare up, I was like, oh my God, I'm back to square one. How is this possible? I thought it was healing. I finally made the connection that dairy was causing it. And here's what I'm gonna say. There's two causes to ulcerative colitis. One is just the over accumulation of toxins in the body. You're filthy. Your body can't keep up. The colon is one of the eliminatory organs. That's how you get rid of toxins. We got the lungs, the skin, the kidneys, and the colon. So you gotta keep those four areas like a river open, flowing, releasing toxins out of your body. So my colon had had enough with the pizza diet, the hamburgers, the McDonald's, the KFC, too much. It was too much, so it gave up. It was like, no, we're not doing this anymore. I'm gonna bleed until you change. So the one component is you're too toxic, but there's a second component that not a lot of people talk about and it's just an allergy. You got an allergy to something you're eating as well on top of the toxicity. For me, it was dairy. As soon as I got rid of dairy, I never had another flare again. It's 2017, that was back in 2012. That's 15 years. That's been, wow. Wow, look at me. Five years, I haven't had a flare up. I'm cured, I'm 100% cured. I can eat whatever I want, pretty much. I'm not gonna get the colitis symptoms. I will get acne symptoms. I will get much minor symptoms. If I eat wheat, for example, I don't handle the gluten very well. It's fine in the gut. It's fine in the gut. I don't really feel it in the gut anymore, but I'll start breaking out like a teenage bachelor party attendee. It's a nightmare but it's so much less of a nightmare it's just minor cosmetic things it's like all right if i want a cheat meal here and there i can have it i'm not gonna die of blood loss so that was a long story still really long and i'm sorry about that i tried to make it short so that was my story i healed myself and not only did the colitis go away but my hair was thinning hair is thickening up again my skin was terrible. It's better now. It's not perfect, but that's because I like to eat certain things that don't love me like I love them. My arthritis in my knees went away. My depression lifted. Like so many things got better. It wasn't just the stomach. That's the true beauty of healing. When you heal naturally the real way by detoxifying your body, everything goes away. You don't have to target the stomach. Oh, I need to heal the stomach just do the right thing 
get out of the body's way and everything starts to get better. That's the beauty of life. So here's the basic protocol that you should be following to heal colitis or any disease, but digestive illnesses will respond amazingly to this. So you wake up, start drinking water till you feel hydrated again. You've been laying in bed all night, breathing out your water. We lose water as we breathe. Imagine that. So you're dehydrated as shit. Drink some water, two or three cups, maybe even a liter, depending on how thirsty you are. That's your first thing. You don't go for coffee. Coffee dehydrates you. You don't go for cereal. Water. That's what you start with. Then, now this one's a bit of a pain in the butt, but it helped me more than anything. Even after like six years of healing, I started doing this and noticed tremendous benefits to where I could start digesting all the things I was eating much better. That's celery juice every morning, two cups at least. That usually equals about one full head of celery juiced, fresh. You wake up and you juice that head. You get two cups and you drink it plain. You can't add anything to it. That's the secret. It's so much better with lemon and ginger, but you can't do it. Add a little spinach. It's delicious. You can't. Don't do it. It has to be plain. It's mystical shit. I don't know why, but it has the exact minerals to rebuild your stomach acid and you will notice it. That's how you have to tackle it. You have to rebuild the stomach acid first and then all your food will be digested and then the colon will start healing because it's not receiving a bunch of undigested proteins that are irritating and scratchy. Scratchy irritating proteins. So do this every day for months, if not a year. Like a long time, just keep doing it. It's not the most delicious thing. It's kind of okay. Your first glass, you'll be like, oh, that's all right. It's a little salty. I could do this. And then two weeks go by you're like, oh, great. Celery juice again. Can't wait for that. Just stick with it. I did it for maybe four months straight every single day. And my digestion, I used to get constipated a lot. Even eating the foods that used to bother me, they started getting better. I could eat beans and rice again without getting constipated. It works. It rebuilds the stomach acid because of this. We need minerals to make stomach acid. But you need stomach acid to digest food to get the minerals. So when you juice the celery, you bypass that stomach acid. You just absorb the minerals needed to make stomach acid. And you're good to go. You're good to go. You get the building blocks to stomach acid and once that's strong again you don't have to drink celery juice anymore i haven't drank in it in like four or five months something like that so i don't need it anymore it rebuilt my stomach acid and it stays like that the next juice that you should consider adding to your diet is cabbage juice cabbage just has a magical ability to heal ulcers it just does it so it's gross it's disgusting it's spicy and weird but do it. Who gives a shit? You drink it for a little while, you start feeling better, then you don't have to go back to it. Just do it now. Stay disciplined now. Complete the healing now. Then you can go eat some delicious vegan foods. Rice and beans. Stuff like that. Potatoes. Delicious vegan foods. I can't guarantee that you can go back to eating steakums. Meat is too scratchy. It's gonna scratch you up. I'm sorry. You'll get enough protein, don't worry. Don't worry. I know I'm not huge, but I only do body weight exercises and I'm buff as shit. I'm buff enough. I'm not George St. Pierre buff. He could flick me away with a pinky finger, but I'm buff enough. So start adding the cabbage juice, maybe a cup. It's, for, it's really powerful. So go easy on it, but have a cup. Do a cabbage juice enema if you want. Just get cabbage juice to the areas you need it. I don't care how you do it. So those are the two medicinal juices that I would add. And then there's teas. Slippery elm and marshmallow root are very soothing to the digestive tract. So is licorice root. Just drink those throughout the day. It's like a slimy, gelatinous, soothing. It just like massages your colon as it goes by. I highly recommend them. As for the diet, the one food that is not gonna cause you trouble 
The one food that is going to heal your colon and allow it to rest is fruit. Ideally, you would be doing like a water fast. A water fast would heal it up. You do that for 21 days under supervision. It's like what we need to do is let the body heal itself. Get out of the way. It's like picture if you had a cut. Say you fell, you scraped your arm. You just leave it. It's going to heal. Imagine if you scratch it every day. You keep slapping it. It's going to take longer to heal. Same with your colon. It's like if you eat anything, you're giving your colon something to do. And food is passing by it. So obviously a water fast, nothing is passing by. And that's the fastest way to heal. But it's hard to do. It's hard to do. But if you can do it, you can't just do that by yourself. You got to be like under supervision. And those cost a lot of money, those kind of places. But that's the ultimate way. If you want to do it, do that. But for those of us in the real world who still need to exist and function, fruit is the friendliest food on earth. It's just because, one, it's so rich in water. Two, the fiber is soft. It's got the soluble fiber. We're talking about peeled fruits here, like papayas, mangoes, bananas, apples, grapes. All these foods are soft and friendly. Try doing, like, the main thing is whatever's in season for you and you find delicious, because it, that's very important. You can't just listen to me and say, okay, mangoes are very healing, but you have no mangoes and they're $3 a mango if you do have them and they're not ripe. And it's just like wherever you live, you probably have something ripe unless you're in winter. You got bananas and dates and you're screwed. Come to Thailand. The fruits in Toronto sucked, but I healed myself on those fruits. Conventional fruits, not even organic. It takes some discipline but you can do it. So eating just fruit is the fastest way to heal. Even raw vegetables will be painful for you, most likely. You can't even eat salads right now. Don't even think about nuts and seeds right now. They're too scratchy. Beans, forget about it. Forget about all these foods, meat, dairy, eggs. Forget them all. Healing is not about nutrients. You don't need a bunch of the ideal nutrition to heal a disease. You need to rest and get rid of the waste that is corrupting your soul. <laughs> People get way too caught up in, oh, we need this nutrient. I'm going to have flax seeds for the omega-3s and spinach. I need the calcium for that. And shut up. Shut up and rest. Go on the fruits. And if you're having fruits like apples, you probably want to peel those apples. Even the skin can be too harsh. But test it for yourself. See how you feel. Anything is going to hurt in the beginning. Unfortunately, your, your colon's all ulcerated and sore. Even eating bananas, even though they're soothing as shit, anything's going to not feel great passing through all the cuts and scrapes. Just stick with it, because those will heal. You could do the water fast, but if you have to eat something, eat fruit. It might hurt initially. Stay away from the acid fruits. Don't go too hard on the oranges and pineapples. It's just think of it. Use your common sense. It burns. It's acidic. Think of soothing. Papaya is probably the most soothing fruit you can get. Super high in omega-3s, cools the inflammation. You'll be good to go. So I would stick on a diet like that until I felt 100% better. That's what I never did. That was my problem. That's why I'm telling you what not to do here. I would stick with the fruits for a bit. Oh, nothing but grapes for four days. And then I'd try something else. And it wouldn't feel very good. I wish that I just initially stayed like nothing but fruit for six months and just completely healed like three months past where i felt like i was completely healed like just complete it complete the healing you may get a bunch of cravings in the beginning but i promise you if you stay disciplined and just do it and know that you're gonna heal from this you will heal this is how to heal it so many people have healed it i healed it you can heal it what's stopping you just don't think about the cheeseburgers. Don't watch cooking shows. Don't watch TV in general because all the commercials come on. They start showing you all these hamburgers and pizza. And it's like, we're not strong enough. We're not strong enough. It's, if you see it, you'll think of it. If you're not seeing it, you're probably not thinking of it. You might be. You might be daydreaming about food. But just relax. 
stay with it and you will heal my friend so i think we're about done here those are my tips the celery juice the cabbage juice those are the healers rebuild the stomach acid heal the ulcers fruit to sustain you it just it's the safest food to eat and it's healing it detoxifies the body gets rid of the poisons and most people have an allergy to some protein rich food and that's why fruit is so healing it's low in protein you're gonna lose some muscle mass i mean i feel bad gsp you're in the ufc it's like if you go on this protocol you're gonna lose muscle mass drop down back down to welterweight because you there's no way you're staying at middleweight on a fruit-based diet i'm sorry but mac danzig he was doing the fruit-based diet in the ufc he wasn't very good but that's just his genetic potential that had nothing to do with the diet sure joe lozon overpowered him like a schoolgirl, but had nothing to do with the diet so you can heal yourself of anything, not just colitis. This is why I started my YouTube channel. Back in the day, I was starting to heal from this colitis bullshit. And I was like, I gotta tell people. Doctors said it was impossible, incurable. And I was like, I'm healing. I'm off all medication. I haven't taken medication since 2008. It's almost nine, over nine years now. It's like, I'm healed of it. And so I started going on colitis forums and telling people like, I'm healing from this, you can heal. And I would get deleted and banned. Let that one sink in. Who's in control? The powers that be. A lot of people don't want you to know this. There's a lot of money to be made on those medications they're giving you. And you don't need them. They don't help. If anything, they make your body sicker. They clog up the liver. You don't need it. Natural way. Clean out. You can do it. I believe in you. So thank you so much for watching the video, my friend. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down. If you're going to eat a cactus just to see what it's like to have colitis. It's noble of you. I appreciate that you want to feel what we have felt, but... Don't do it. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. So thank you so much for watching. Consider getting yourself a... Oh, uh, no. A vegan yet? Sure. Try the vegan diet. It works. I didn't want to stay vegan, but here I am. Nine years later. It just works. It just works. You don't have to do it for the animals. Do it for yourself first. Then you'll appreciate the little chickens and cows running around. You'll be like, maybe I don't have to slit their throats and drink their blood. You don't need it. Okay, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. Share this with George St. Pierre. Tweet it to him, please. I want him to get better. He's a great fighter. He's a great man. I think. I don't know. He could be terrible. <laughs> okay, we're done here. Subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.